Well, um, as the as um, as the judge uh, Todder said, I'm going to offer my own view of what happens uh, during five this five last five years uh, in relation not only to the regulation but the context of the regulation. You cannot. In my in my view, you cannot analyze just what has happened in in, uh, in relation to the to the, the successions regulation alone, but you have also to take into account what is happening in the, the European Union and also outside of the European Union. Because when you are dealing with successions and cross border successions, sometimes the elements are not so clear related to the European Union and not so clearly related only to successions issues. So this is uh, something that we have to take into account the global context of the of the successions regulation and in that uh, i have started with this uh, uh, well this this sentences written and sung by uh, um, someone that that we really miss that is david bowie and i think that it reflects uh, more or less the impression that we have. Well, it's a surprise that we have so many judgments, uh, but our brains are hurting a lot because many things are still open. And I have to uh, say that, okay, but that's, that, that's what we got. That's the, the, the information that we got and we have to manage um, uh, what has happened with all the information that we have. This, that, that means the judgments, regulations, and all the information. And in that respect, I have to congrat I want to congratulate Professor Klanish Schmidt for his brilliant presentation about the case law, because this is going to help me a lot in, in, my, in, my, in my current presentation. Thank you very much. Well, the context, uh, first of all, uh, well, it's fully applicable from uh, August uh, 2015. It's something that you already know. And, and as every single uh, EU regulation has to be reviewed in, in a certain moment. So this is very important. And if you take into account article, what is stated in Article 82, you will see what, that one of the questions that might find uh, difficult for the problematic issues that may arise and has also been uh, uh, underlined by Professor Klein Schmidt is the relationships between uh, judgments and out of course settlements and, and these parallel proceedings that may arise, especially uh, in relation to, to some notaries that have this um, judicial power in their own countries to do something. So this is something that has been uh, established by Article 82. And after these five years, we see that is a, a real problem and an open question for the future. But anyway, uh, the, during these five years, I have many things has happened affecting the, the succession regulation. And this is something that we are going to at least pinpoint some of these uh, questions. Uh, from a regulatory perspective, we have to take into account that uh, two important and connected uh, uh, EU regulations are, uh, are, are fully applicable. That is the question with the insolvency regulation, the modification, the recast of the insolvency regulation. We have to take into account that insolvency and successions are, are very much linked. So, I mean, what happens with uh, both of them, they are connected, but more connected are those regulations affecting patrimonial rights of spouses or of couples, and of course, uh, um, what is going to happen in the future with the, um, we'll see, Brussels to Ter or whatever we call it, or maybe just with the number regulation that is going also to affect uh, with the application of the, of the successions regulations. And of course, from the perspective of the European Court of Justice, uh, the sixth judgment that has been so brilliantly analyzed by Professor Kleinschmidt, uh, Cases Kubica, Mankov, Oberle, uh, Birch, WB, EE. I mean, those cases have been already mentioned and they are touching so many things and so interesting that, uh, they, of course, this is very, very uh, something. Th this is also a contextual issue that we have to take into account. But apart from that, we have to face also that uh, the ECJ has uh, referred to issues uh, closely related to successions when analyzing other instruments of the European Union. So, I mean, it, it was something in the past, remember the case CHW in the 82 mentioning the scope of application of the Brussels One uh, convention in that moment, and, and that some issues related to successions were outside of the scope or not. And then we have also realized that in some other uh, judgments of the, of the European Court of Justice related to uh, either matrimonial um, uh, issues, cri matrimonial crisis issues or uh, protection of minors. And if you see that, that also referring to issues uh, linked to the, to the Brussels, uh, to, the, uh, to the successions regulation. So we have to take into account all these 
context, not only the regulatory context, but also the, the work of the ECJ is so important, both in relation to the successions regulation and to other uh, regulations, mostly in the field of family law. It will happen the same uh, in the future, I'm sure, uh, in the relation to the patrimonial uh, or uh, patrimonial issues of uh, spouses of couples, I'm sure that it will happen again. So uh, this is the context, and now we are going to see uh, the two elements of my presentation that are first the highlights, and secondly, the pitfalls. So this is how I'm going to divide my presentation in uh, dealing with these two issues. Highlights. Well, uh, many of the issues uh, that must be highlighted from the um, uh, succession regulation have been already mentioned by Professor Kleinschmidt, and I'm sure that they will be dealt with other presentation. So just very briefly, uh, I have to say that, of course, we have the first uh, private international law instrument in the field of uh, law of successions. This is very important. So um, secondly, uh, it has very clear objectives, uh, and, and those objectives must be uh, underlined in the, all the interpretation and also the application of the, of, the, of the regulation. This is very important what is uh, stated by the different recitals of the regulation. Uh, we have, of course, a, a double um, private international instrument, both with the jurisdiction and enforcement rules, plus this uh, European public document, that is the European Certificate of Succession, that has been dealt by many, in some cases of the European Court of Justice. Very interesting what already explained. And of course, the two very important principles that uh, that um, that are of, of utmost importance because of the, the differences that the, they were underlined in the different uh, systems of the uh, of the European member states. First of all, the principle of the unity of succession uh, and the connection factor of the habitual residence of the disease at the time of the death. Uh, and Professor Kanye Smith has referred to those cases dealing or trying to uh, interpret the elements to define the habitual residence of the disease. This is important, but still there are open questions, as has already been mentioned. And of course, the incorporation of party autonomy principle. This is, this is something that we are seeing in all the regulations in the field of family law and also the successions law, of course, uh, and something that uh, is also new for some member states of the European Union. Uh, in, in, in some of the systems, party autonomy was not allowed in the field of successions law. And now you have a, a, a uniform uh, instrument, European Union instrument that uh, promotes, of course, with some limitations, but promotes the uh, party autonomy principle in the field of the law of successions that is also of, of importance. Uh, well, you have to take into account the context as well, not only the regulations, but I mean the regulations in relation to uh, uh, the relations in family law in relation to the successions. And first of all, we have to uh, take into account the game of the play of the different uh, uh, scopes of application, uh, substantive, uh, especially so scope of, of, uh, of application, and the and the dialogue, and the to try to find a coherent application of both uh, family uh, law uh, regulations and the successions regulation. This is important in the successions is Article One especially too with this, those issues who are excluded. And of course, Article 23 with refers to the uh, scope of application of the Lex Sucessioni, so this is important. But you have to take into account that uh, because of the timing, because I mean, uh, all, this of the all this pressure of, of producing regulations in the field of family and successions law is not, uh, is not, is not running parallelly, but in different moments, uh, what we find is in, in the uh, succession uh, regulation, we don't find um, rules who enable, who enable a, a, a proper uh, coordination with the family law regulations, but you can find that uh, in the new regulations in family law. So in, in the field, especially if you see in, in those regulations in the patrimonial issues of both spouses and, and couples, you can find some of them trying to coordinate uh, the jurisdiction rules of both uh, the succession regulation and those in family law. And something similar happens with, um, with, uh, with the new Brussels uh, 2 ter um, regulation of 2019 in Article 13.3, where it refers to the incidental and questions of a, a matrimonial crisis or family or, or, or a protection of minor with regulation. This is something that uh, is 
uh, what happens in Article 13 is is, is the result of the of the case law of the European Court of Justice. So in a, in, in so in those provisions provide for a um, trying to provide for a, a proper coordination of both. Uh, the succession regulations with family law regulations. And this is of utmost importance because we don't find this clear solution, only the exclusions of the scope of application from the first one, that is the succession regulation. Well, uh, in something similar, but in a different way, of course, because I mean, uh, they are so much divided. If either you are in a succession procedure or you are in an insolvency procedure, but anyway, sometimes they can collide. And, 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 and also you can find some uh, provisions in relation to the coordination or or non application in both the Brussels of the succession regulation and the new insolvency recast uh, um, insolvency regulation. So, uh, after um, that, we have the, the first pool question, number one. And, and this pool question states that uh, where can we find rules facilitating the coordination between the the succession regulation and those regulations in the field of family law. And we have three different uh, answers. So uh, the first one is uh, solely in the regulation, that is the succession regulation. Uh, B, that is mostly in the new uh, EU regulations in the field of family law. And C, neither of the above have they have been, been developed by the European Court of Justice. So um, we have now the possibility for you to answer this first pool. I'm, I'm very happy with the answers because I, uh, uh, they clearly stated uh, most of the answers. I mean, 12 to 2, that it's B, that is the new uh, regulations in the field of family law that stated these uh, rules in order to enable the co uh, coordinate application of the regulations. And some of them uh, opted for the um, ECJ, that is the ECJ will also solve. I hope that also the ECJ will help in that respect. And uh, I, I think that uh, Her Honor uh, Toder will help us in that respect that uh, the ECJ also, uh, because he's doing a, a great job in the application of this regulation, but also will uh, give us clues in the future for a coordinated application of this with other regulations, of course. Thank you very much for all the participants in this in this voting. So uh, we continue. Uh, so we, I share the, the, okay. And, and I think it's enough. I share the, the results and now I stop. Just click on the sharing. cross and then. Okay, I stop sharing. Okay. I close this and I continue with my presentation. So thank you very much for your voting and and for and congratulations for those who, uh, who uh, but the others they have not missed. I mean, I think that is important the, the work done by the ECA at, at, as well. So thank you very much. At least they, they realize that in the, in the succession regulations, there are not rules in that respect. So we continue and now we are going, we continue with the highlights uh, then we will pass to the pitfalls. And in relation to the highlights, is, uh, we have to also mention uh, the great job done by this European Court of Justice in the application and the interpretation of the of the succession regulation. Well, you see, it's, 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 it's amazing how the the ECJ has worked in the in, in specialized in, in the in the interpretation of the of the of the regulation. Uh, we can see uh, a, a very strong uh, trend to the judicial lawmaking in the ECJ in that respect with very creative uh, solutions, uh, trying to uh, obtain one uh, coherence of the application of the, of the regulation, uh, internal coherence, that is uh, that the, the different provisions, they, um, they match to each other. Sometimes a little bit formal, but anyway, uh, the, the, uh, the ECJ has tried very yeah, I... hard and I think has succeeded in, in many aspects to find this coherence within the, the regulation itself. If there are so many things that should be mentioned and have already been mentioned by Professor Tani Schmidt, but for example, the, the, the limitation of the scope of application of Lex Sessionis with other uh, statutes like Lex Rex or Lex Registrationis, questions which are not uh, uniform by uh, the, 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 the European legislator. And you can see um, first Mankov, secondly Kubica, and we have seen the first approaches to the interpretation of many of the key definitions or concepts of the regulations, that is uh, successions with cross-border implication, habitual residence of the disease, court, decision, and you can see all the cases have already been mentioned, overlay, WB, EE, 
the exclusive application of the jurisdiction rules and also to the issue of, of uh, national certificates of successions like uh, Epstein, for example, Oberle. So you can see that, that these highlights of the European Court of Justice case law, as well as the optional use of forms in an excess of the implementing regulation of 2014, a case bridge, for example, some these are some of the of the main highlights that have already been mentioned by Professor Kleinschmidt. So, in any way, that the, the ECJ has done a great job during these five years trying to to find a coherence in the application of the of the regulation, interpreting some of the elements. Uh, clarifying the scope of application of the regulation so and, and some of the key issues and practical ones in relation of, of this of this important uh, instrument apart from that um we have to say that not only the ECJ has been uh, dealing with that but also national courts and authorities have been dealing with that. Uh, you can see that in, in all of all of our member states there have been cases in their trying to to find the the uh, the uh, the application in time of the of the regulation in Spain we have uh, dozens of cases related of if the application in the regulation is applicable of now in questions of time and I see that in, in other member states as well so this is important that the, the involvement of the authorities in the application of the of the regulation and also that the members of the case law of the ECJ has already affected uh, judges from uh, from the member states this is very important they have read through uh, the, the, the judgments and they are uh, applying uh, correctly because of the guide established by the ECA. And also some member states have already adapted the legislation uh, to the regulation and to the changes provided by the ECA. So this is important that this ECA has also affected the interpretation and, and, and some uh, legislative measures taken by, by the member states. Well, and now we go with the pitfalls. Um, well, the regulation uh, show us very uh, this tricky questions that has to be mentioned. First of all, um, as, as I already mentioned, uh, there are um, the connection between successions law issues with family law is so close that sometimes you need to coordinate the, the regulations, regulations who have been produced in different times uh, and with different parliaments, different commissions, and sometimes it produces instruments that sometimes they, they are not, uh, they not, they don't dialogue. In, in, in some moments, that's what's happened, for example, with the with the, uh, uh, this regulation, and and there is a lack sometimes with the transversal coherence with this and other instruments. So this is as something that has to be reviewed, not only in relation to the regulation this itself, but also in a common uh, view of the legislative proceeding of the ECJ uh, of the European Union, excuse me, in, in the field of international of private international law. So this is something that affects not only to the regulation, but also to in globally to the product to the production of private international law uh, rules in the European Union. Well, there is a specialization of fragmentation. That is, that is not bad in itself to have these specialized rules and fragmented. But if they, if they, if if you don't find this coherence bit, uh, and the, uh, and promote this dialogue between the texts, uh, because they are produced in different moments and sometimes without taking uh, no match. Uh, uh, the solutions to each other, then it produces problems in the application. Of course, we have the ECJ there that has, uh, in many cases, uh, decided uh, the, the, the scope of one instrument to the other. But sometimes, you know, the, you find questions that must be, be treated jointly. For example, the uh, survivors, the, the rights of the survivors, spouse or, or, or husband, uh, and successions is something that has to be jointly treated because they, they are uh, they are very much interconnected. The, the rights of the of the of the of the widow in 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 those cases. For example, this is one example. But anyway. Um, of course, uh, and not only you have to take into account the coherence within the instruments, uh, but also the coherence with other instruments and the application with third countries. Um, well, uh, we have in Spain many cases related to Britons, and that produce uh, very tricky questions when we are dealing with them, uh, because I've, they, many of them they have properties in our country, they want fragmented successions in our country, but the, the unity of their successions obliges us to, to, to apply the regulation, and this creates maybe problems in the recognition of these 
of these cases or judgments than uh, in, in the United Kingdom. And that happens with the United Kingdom, of course, with, with other uh, third countries. Uh, so that, that creates problems. Third countries, I mean, to the regulation now and in the future to the European Union as well. So this is something that should be taken into account. In, in, the, in the field of the law applicable to the successions, it is already covered. But I mean, in, in, uh, um, this question should be treated as well in the future. Well, party autonomy is, has been um, uh, addressed by the by the regulation. This is, uh, in my in my perspective, this is positive. But of course, a, a more open uh, possibility to the to use the party autonomy principle could please could perhaps enable a, a closer coordination to this regulation to the others in the in the field of family law. So maybe this is a question that could be reviewed in the future uh, in order to enable this coordination with other regulations that already subsistent. But anyway, uh, this is something that shall be studied in any way. And so there are some deviations from the principle of unity of successions that is understandable. This is very much close to the traditions of some uh, legislation of a member state, especially in the field of the lex raicitae and immovables. That is this is understandable, but is this fragmentation sometimes could bring problems in the uh, in, in the coordination, especially with the third countries as well. So. Um, this is some of the uh, of the pitfalls of tricky questions that still exist in the regulation. Um, and of course, uh, even though the European Court of Justice has done a great job in the in the uh, in the interpretation of some of the elements, like the habitual residence of the disease, still there are some problems uh, that BASC has been generating in, in positive and conflicts, false legis. So um, um, this is important that. Uh, um, that uh, the, the European Court of Justice continue in, in, in this in this uh, position of uh, giving more clues uh, in order to have a clear idea which are the elements to have to, which must be taken into account for the interpretation of of this uh, of of this concept as well as others that have been already mentioned like courts judgments or and so on and so forth. Well, and still there are some issues that which that are open. For example, for us in in, in Spain, this is an is an well, it's a state with more than one legal system in the field of the law of successions, and uh, still we don't know what is going to happen with the application of thirty six and thirty seven, in in the field that we lack some uh, proper uh, answers internally in our article. Um, both 13 and 9, 9 8 of the of the civil code and so we are uh, there's a big discussion now going on in Spain uh, if if there's going to be an static or dynamic application of the conflict of law rules of the succession that means that in if, if for the internal application of the succession it will have to rely on the conflict of law rules of the regulation or of the civil code so it's because there are some gaps in in our system so this is a, a big discussion now in Spain I know that the the, the the static the static interpretation is winning but anyway it's a big issue in Spain so this is an open an open question that maybe could be solved in the future by the either the ECJ or a review of the regulation and of course the classic problem of the um, what is hap what happens with the application of the foreign law that the, we don't have a, a uniform system in the European Union and 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 this problem affects not only to to this regulation in particular but to all regulations of course. And of the application, uh, many of the questions and the pitfalls and, of course, of the limits and the tricky questions and the open issues that are, are, are uh, even though the, the, the great job done by the European Court of Justice have been already mentioned by Professor Kleinschmidt, op open questions, the often fragen. So, but anyway, uh, they are, I will say that uh, one of the issues that I will, uh, I, I, I will underline are those related to the coordination of the uh, of the internal coordination of the of the of the of the uh, of the instrument and the coordination with other instruments the transversal coordination of course the coordination with the, with internal systems well the an autonomous approach uh, but uh, that is good of course uh, the autonomous interpretation but the ECJ can also refer to the principles of the law of the member states and sometimes uh, this is something that uh, I am with me missing in the in the ECA cases of course it's, it's open to the ECA uh, they have to make an autonomous interpretation that's for sure that that's no that's not the issue that's not the question but also they can in some cases make use of these principles of the law the visa attractive and they have and, and there are open questions still for this 
and the relation with other instruments. The tension between Lex Exocianis and Lex Recite, I think it's not, uh, there are some issues still uh, pending that, that should be, that should be shown. That should be sh ruled, and of course the parallel, the parallel uh, uh, cases of for judicial and non-judicial, especially in in those systems where the notaries have jurisdiction powers. I think this is uh, this is something that uh, still they will provoke problems. This is still open for questions and uh, in the future. And it's something, if, if you remember, that was mentioned in Article 82 of the regulation at the beginning of in the, in the first slides. So it's something that uh, the, 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 the European Union legislator realized at the beginning, but still there are some, there are some problems that will, be so, have, will have to be solved in the future. And of course, there are other questions that have been mentioned and, and, and I, I, I mentioned in this provision, but I, I, I'm running out of time. So I've pass to the second poll question number two. That is the determination of the habitual residence of the disease as the principal connecting factor. And you have three alternatives. A, the regulation offers a comprehensive definition of this connection factor that does not deserve further qualification by the ECJ. B, the regulation makes no mention to its determination relying on the, um, of the law of the, of the EC. And C, the regulation mentions factual elements that should, which we should be considering this determination, but they deserve a further clarification of the by the ECG. So you have these three possible options, and you can start voting them. I share the the results. This is uh, the outstanding majority of you have opted for three, and that's true. I mean, uh, the the regulation mentioned some factuals, uh, some factual elements in the recitals. Not in the in the wording, not in the in the provisions, but in the recital in the results, the, ref, the, the, the regulation refers to some of the elements. So that's the reason why B is not is is not right. Uh, of course, A is not because A is only uh, offering uh, some elements. But uh, the, the truth is that C is uh, you already have seen in the presentation done by Jans. Schmidt that uh, the ECJ has referred especially to the question of the determination of the habitual residence and giving some clues for the factual elements which must be taken into account. So thank you very much. Um, congratulations. And we continue to the end. And now the assessment. And the assessment goes to this uh, three ideas I have already mentioned during my presentation. Okay. Uh, when you take into account the application of the, the regulation itself, the succession regulation and the application by the ECJ, this is something that is important that we concentrate in the instrument itself and the, co and the internal coherence of the instrument. But of course, we cannot forget that successions, uh, sometimes the successions proceedings are very much closely related to other uh, cases so that you, you have to provide a global view to the legal uh, to the legal regime of cross party successions internally and from the external uh, uh, mm, with third countries of the third countries to the European Union. Uh, this is very much true in the field of incidental questions um, that have already been mentioned, and this is something that should be developed also not only by the regulations, by the by the also by the ECJ in the future. And of course, that relates to the coherence between the, the, the different EU instruments in the field of successions and family law. And I would uh, suggest that the main autonomous approach uh, that is uh, very much important and, and the ECJ has uh, underlined the importance of that because this is no question about that, should also take into account because some, uh, in some of the cases, we, we, it's difficult that, to understand the solutions because they are so differently uh, related to some of the legal traditions of the European member state that of course the, the, the ECJ is, uh, is, um, is sovereign to do that. Of course, we, we have no questions about that, but um, <clears throat> maybe a look sometimes to the principles of the legal systems could be um, a, comp a, a, com a good complement. That's it. So uh, with this is the end of my presentation. I'm sorry that I uh, I, de I devoted a couple of minutes more. Sorry about that. And okay, that is five years. That's all that we got so far. So we will wait for the next five and uh, what happens with a uh, future review. Uh, thank you very much and do take care because of the crisis we are suffering now all over the world, but especially in, in Europe and and in our countries. So thank you very much. That's it. <laughs>